Today's video lesson, do I need dry cabinets if I'm a photographer? Action. This is a dry cabinet and this is where you're supposed to store your lenses, cameras and photography equipment in there when you're not using them. So do you need this? Yes! How come you don't have one? Let me tell you why you need a dry cabinet. Firstly, it's a dry cabinet. It's not a fridge, it's not a chiller, it's not a... <laughs> they always misunderstood and they asked me like, Andrew, my husband just bought a fridge and he's putting his camera in there. No, it's not. It's a dry cabinet. What it does is that it draws away humidity from the cavity of that dry cabinet. That's why it's called dry cabinet. Why do you need to do this? Simple. If you don't use your equipment and you store it in somewhere that's humid and damp, that's a sure proof way of how you get fungal growth on your lenses and camera. And that can be really quick. That can be as short as like six months, you're going to have fungus growing on your lenses. And once you have fungus growing on your lenses, trust me, it's not fun, it's not cheap to tear them apart just to clean the glass elements. And even if you do so, the chances of it growing fungus again will come back. And that's sure to happen. A lot of my students actually buy themselves camera and lenses and then stop using them for like seven, eight months, put them in a bag, boom! That's how they look like. So one of the best ways to find out whether you have fungus on your lens, simple. Take your lens, point it to a light source, that's how they look like. If they do, then good luck. How do you even get fungus on your lenses? Simple. Three reasons. Number one, it needs water, humidity, somewhere that's wet and that exists everywhere because our air has humidity. So that's what dry cabinets do, they remove humidity. Another thing that is the recipe for fungus growing are the dust. Dust with all the spores of the fungus. And thirdly, your dirty fingers. Your fingers and hands are always dirty. That's why the COVID-19 pandemic going around, they say that wear masks or always wash your hands or do both. So your sweat and all the acids can actually be the food for all this fungus to spread and grow. So removing one of it, you cannot remove fingerprint, right? There's no machine to go scrub it. And then you cannot remove dust. It's almost, in hey, did you watch this lesson? Dust is almost impossible to remove in the whole photography industry. The best component to remove now would be removing humidity. And that's what the dry cabinet does. And then I have students writing to me, Andrew, what if I get a box like this? And then I put this dehumidifying chemical like Thirsty Hippo. Would it work? Well, that worked pretty well until two things happened. Number one, the humidifying chemical like this will actually suck up a lot of water and then one of my friends actually do the same and then that thing tumbled and he got flooded and his lens was swimming in there for months without him realizing it. Stay away from this. Number two, drawing too much of moisture from the air can actually make the rubbers on your lenses and grips and all this crack. And that's even worse. So if you have a dry cabinet, it's important to maintain the humidity value from this to this. Don't go too much or all the rubber housings will start cracking. It's even worse than having fungus. So if your dehumidifying level is too low, that's what's going to happen. The rubbers will crack. If it's too high, then no difference. So that's the best value to have. And that's it. How do you choose one? Simple. So there are two types of dry cabinets. You have the analog version and then you have the digital version. What's the difference? The analog versions are pretty affordable. They are really cheap. Cheaper than your thirsty hippo and your storage box. But the problem with this is that sometimes you can draw out too much of humidity and then you have to crack the door open. So that's not really fun. And it comes with this analog, archaic analog dial. Well, I don't think anybody's buying this or selling this anymore, really then go for the digital version. What it does, it uses electronic to remove humidity in the cabinet itself. But the good point of the digital version is that you can set a value or a threshold so that the dry cabinet will not exceed or go under this value. So that's really good. You don't need to crack the door open kind of stuff. But then again, you leave it on the whole time. And some people ask me, is it expensive? No, we have three and we're still not broke yet. So to summarize today's lesson, do you need dry cabinets? Yes, if you have one camera and one lens, you better store it in the dry cabinet. Let me tell you why, because you only have one lens and one camera. You screw that up and that's it. 
we have three, four or five. So if we spoil one, we just blame the other guy and still have two or three more to use. So are dry cabinets expensive to operate if I have to turn it on all the time? Yes, you need to turn it on all the time, but it's running off 12 volt adapters like this. So it's really, really affordable. We leave them on for years now, isn't it? We never turn it off. We turn off server. We never need to reboot the dry cabinet. <laughs> well, unless Microsoft makes one, then you need to reboot it. <laughs> How big or how large should I buy my dry cabinet? Simple. If you're going to be investing in more lenses and camera bodies, my suggestion, buy a dry cabinet that is twice the size of the space that you have for all your equipment. But the logic is this. If you're going to be borrowing a lens or a camera from your friend, the first question your friend asks you is that, hey, do you have a dry cabinet at home? That's the logic because don't buy a dry cabinet the exact same size and then you start borrowing things from your friend and then you have your friend's equipment outside the dry cabinet. That's not friendly of you. If you're in that situation, let me give you a tip, a professional tip coming from a professional photographer. Remove your own equipment, put it somewhere else, put your friend's equipment in the dry cabinet. Yours sleep outside. Your friend's equipment sleep inside. That's what friends are for. And speaking of good friend, I wish you support our e-learning courses that you can find on our e-learning websites here. Check out the premium courses the all access and also the genre-based e-learning titles. But if you love fun and dedicated photography lessons like what you enjoy here in YouTube channel, check out our YouTube exclusive members. You're gonna love the membership because we have three levels for you to choose. Check out level one and level two. So really, speaking of, be a good friend. Do I ever have lenses that I have fungus? Yes, two of them. That's because we don't use that lenses that much. So here is an important tip. If you're not gonna be using a particular lens for weeks and months to come, a simple suggestion, wipe it down before you store it in a dry cabinet. Don't leave your fingerprints with all these organic acids. That's food. That's Burger King for fungus. Not good. Wipe it down. <laughs>